بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الهاكم والتكاثر حتى زرتم المقابر كلا سوف تعلمون ثم كلا سوف تعلمون كلا لو تعلمون علم اليقين لترون الجحيم ثم لترون عين اليقين ثم لا تسألون يوم إذن عن النعيم This is a Makkin surah and like many other short surahs its meaning is profound What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to us through this surah is a heavy warning for how long are you going to be busy in your heads, in your minds, thinking of your dunya, chasing the material goods. Even when we came to this janazah, brothers, we're a majority of us are guilty thinking, how, what time will this finish? What time do I have to be at this place and that place? We don't think of our own death here and now. Al Jumu'ah, we came to the Friday prayer, thinking when is it going to finish? When am I going to leave it? When Yawm Al Qiyamah is going to happen on Al Jumu'ah. How often do Muslims come to the Jum'ah knowing today might be the day of judgment? Today might be the day the clouds will come and Allah will call. But we don't think that. We think it will be delayed and there will be respite further and further. But he says, For how long will you chase these worldly things with each other, competing with one another? Until you visit the grave? And most ulama they say, you could consider it like this today. We came, we visit the grave of this beautiful brother, may Allah give him Jannah and ease. We came to visit and we will leave and go home. Unfortunately, that's not what the verse is talking about. When Allah says, Hatta zurtumul maqabir, until you visit your grave, He means your death. But He calls it visit because you will not stay in the grave forever. It's temporary. You will be called out from the grave. You won't stay there. And in another tafsir from Ibn Kathir and others, they say that Allah is threatening you and I. It is a threat. For how long is the dunya going to keep you away from me in your mind, in your heart? Wait till I get you in your grave. This verse is a heavy verse for you and I to reflect upon. That is Allah going to get us in our grave or are we going to go to Allah in our grave as the Shaykh mentioned? Are we going to him happily or are we going to him with, 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 with withdrawal symptoms, with fears? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to us, Kalla, Kalla, get your attention, Kalla, all the things of the dunya you chase, useless will it be when you come here. It will not benefit you. Don't bring me the good. And remember this surah brothers is speaking about halal things. We're not talking about haram dunya. The surah is talking about halal, chasing, trying to get married, chasing, trying to get a bigger house, chasing, trying to get better dunya, more dunya, more children, etc. It's talking about halal things. Kalla, useless will those things be. Sofa ta'alamun. Don't take my word for it. You'll find out yourself. Don't take my word for it, brothers. That's what Allah is saying. You don't have to believe me, although Allah is al-haq. He speaks truth. But you don't have to believe me. You will know yourself. You will come to know. Thumma kalla. Again, why does Allah repeat himself? Except that it's crucial. Thumma kalla. Know your dunya is useless. Sofa ta'alamun. Again, he says, you will know. Kalla law ta'alamun al-ilm al It is something of a knowledge, of a certain knowledge, if only you had it. Brothers, this is the reality. Why do we get distracted even at a janaza? Dunya jokes, dunya comments, I hear them. Even at a janaza. Because we think that man is dead. Let's take him, let's go and move on. This was not the purpose of the janazah from the sunnah of the Prophet The janazah, the man is gone. His time is up. No more, no more rewards, nothing except through his children. No more, nothing for him to do here. His time is up. The purpose of the janazah is for you and me, not for him. His time is gone. He is going to do his business now. The janazah is for you to wake up that you are going to end up in this mud. Someone's going to put you and I in it. Right now you carried him, sooner or later someone's going to carry you and I. If only you had the certain knowledge of the resurrection, if you believed with yaqeen, and it's left blank by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as if to say, if you did know, you would change your life, you would be different, you wouldn't stay this way. 
and you wouldn't remain this way. And the Mufassirin, they say that the balance here is because he says thum kalla and then he says thumma kalla, meaning that the Kafir will know and then the Muslim will know. Another tafsir says is the angel of death reaches you, you will definitely know. And another tafsir says that the second ayah is when you go into the grave in Munkar and Nakir to question you, then you will know. Another tafsir is, is that when you go into the grave, you will know. And the other, the second ayah is when you come out of the grave, you will know. From the eye or the heart, you will know the fire. You will know the fire whether you like it or not. You will know it one way or another. Either you will know it from a distance, protected, or you will know it seeing it, knowing you are going to it. Again, don't take my word for it. You will eventually see it with your eyes. Again, the Mufassirin, they say, the first ayah is when you hear the fire and the second ayah is when you are in it. The Muslims, they hear it and they are in it. Another tafsir says is that the first ayah is the Kafir will go in and the second ayah, the Muslim too will go in to be purified for what he did. And finally, the last tafsir is that the Kafir will go in and the Muslim will be grateful and being safeguarded from it protected from it. This is what you need to take away with you from this grave. That when you reach Allah on that day, on that platform, He will ask you about every single ni'mah He gave you. Na'im, plural. And the companions were worried. They wanted to know what na'im, what ni'mah. So they said, Ya Rasul, what's the smallest thing I should worry about? What's the smallest ni'mah Allah has given me? And He said, the smallest blessing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala azza wa jal has given you is that breath you take. That's the smallest blessing he will ask you. And the hadith that comes to mind to conclude is once one of the Sahaba, they come out, Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, hungry, comes out into the night looking for food. And he sees the Prophet, he too came out of his house. And he sees Umar, he too came out of his house. And they had stones tied to their bellies, suffering, <coughs> burning inside. And when they showed the Prophet their stone, he pulled his up and he showed them too. He was suffering twice as much as his Ummah, always. And one of the companions saw them and they said, let's go to his house and he was in, they were invited. And the man went in and told his wife, said, offer them everything. What do we have? They had some ripe dates, some unripe dates, some bread, some milk, and they had a goat that couldn't produce milk. So they slaughtered everything they had and gave it sacrifice for Rasulullah. They wept thinking, our prophet is hungry, feed him. And as soon as the food was prepared, brothers, Rasulullah took meat, put it in his bread. When you are fasting for a day, they suffered for many. One day, do you pass the food on or do you take the first bite? He suffered so much, but yet he didn't take the first bite. He said, quick, get this home for Fatima has not seen the likes of this for days. Az-Zahra radiallahu anha. Showing how much he felt for his daughter that she suffered. Take this to her. And then they ate. And when they ate, just enough for the stomach to get a bit comfortable, just enough to come to his senses from the pain of hunger. He immediately remembered, Allah will ask us about this. Whereas you and I, after we fast, we eat, we say, Alhamdulillah, I did a good deed for Allah, so he fed me. We have a different persona, a different approach to everything as the Prophet we should try our best. May Allah guide us to His Sunnah and make us firm upon His Sunnah and protect us from all innovations and all of the, the bid'ah that man creates. Guide us only to the beauty of His Sunnah, inshallah. Seek out the religion, brothers. Don't just rely on people like me to come and, and teach little things. This is not knowledge. Real knowledge is much deeper. You have to believe in yourselves that you too can learn and bring that knowledge and that Jannah to your house. The Prophet ﷺ said, you walk through the gardens of the dunya taking. Take from the gardens of Jannah as well. And they said, where are these gardens? He said, they are the circles of remembrance where the people gather to remember Allah and they speak about the knowledge. So I encourage you all to attend gatherings and circles. And Hounslow, these brothers have arranged a lecture in Cranford Community College. We've been doing it for the past seven years, every Friday, 7.30. If you don't know about it, you should attend or make your own other circles. But bring yourselves, brothers, to account before account is taken for you. والخوف يملأ غربتي والحزن دائي أرجو الثبات وإنه قسما دواء
and down.